How's it going? Today we're going to discuss the differences between OBS Studio and Streamlabs OBS. Let's get to it. I want to start this off by saying that I've got absolutely nothing against Streamlabs and I think what they do is brilliant. Um, but this is the advice I give to people when they ask me should I use OBS Studio or should I use Streamlabs OBS and this is all just personal preference. The only issue that I've got with any of this is that Streamlabs OBS is marketed towards new streamers and their marketplace isn't particularly new streamer friendly but we'll get into that later on. The first thing to note is that Streamlabs OBS is actually OBS Studio with a bit of flair. OBS Studio is open source which means anybody can view the code and access the code and use the code and all Streamlabs have done have come along, copied the code and went we use this thanks very much and put their own little twist on it, some skins and made it slightly easier in a sense for new streamers to understand the software, use the software and customize their own streams. That's it. Because of this, when you compare the two user interfaces together, there are a lot of similarities between both pieces of software. For many people, they find the Streamlabs OBS user interface to be easier to use. Personally, um, I used it for this video, not to record or anything, but I was doing, obviously, looking into it and doing a bit of research to see what it was like. And the OBS Studio user interface for me is superior. There are less options, it's less intrusive, and if you're looking for a specific setting, I find it easier to find on OBS Studio than I do on Streamlabs OBS. Another point to be aware of is that because Streamlabs have taken the source code from OBS Studio and made it their own. When OBS Studio brings out an update, the Streamlabs team need to take the new code and almost recode their own update or their own version of it in order to have an update for Streamlabs OBS. So you could potentially be a couple of weeks or a couple of months down the line from when an OBS Studio update comes out to when that same update comes out on Streamlabs OBS. There's one issue for people who are using lower end PCs and Streamlabs OBS when they're getting their stream up and running and that is that Streamlabs OBS tends to use more CPU power and more RAM while it's running. Now, Streamlabs OBS doesn't have a bandwidth test mode, so I didn't test it when streaming, but when sitting idle, the Streamlabs OBS is using more and sometimes almost double the amount of RAM in my computer to run and they are both sitting doing nothing. They're just open on my computer with nothing happening on them. And that's not very good. The reason that it's got a higher CPU and a higher RAM usage is because of the additions that Streamlabs have made to OBS Studio with the marketplace and the layout editor and everything that they've included as part of Streamlabs OBS when you compare it to the bare bones of the OBS Studio release. I mentioned the Marketplace, so let's talk about that. Now, the Marketplace that Streamlabs OBS has is, as a whole, in my opinion, a very good service. And it's got a wide variety of themed overlay packages, themed widget packages, themes for your tip page, if you eventually get to the stage where you want to let people tip to you. And it even has its own built-in app store for custom chatbots, stream layout editors, and all sorts in there. It's brilliant. As an addition to OBS, the App Store is one of the better things that they've got added in, without a shadow of a doubt. My only issue with it is that I'm pretty, I'm 99% sure when they released Streamlabs OBS for the first time, it was a marketplace where, like, kind of like the Apple App Store, where you could go in, you could view one particular app, you could pay a one-time fee and you would own the app. And I'm pretty sure that was how it was when they first released Streamlabs OBS. But nowadays, it has changed into requiring a subscription, which I think is a terrible idea. Before any comments are made like, oh, they need to make money, I know. But to be charging upwards of £100 and over £100 for a year's subscription to a service that, let's be honest, many people who are trying out streaming for the first time aren't going to stick with because they don't have a disposable income, potentially, and they're trying out streaming for the first time using software that's advertised to be new person friendly and then being charged upwards of £100. It's ludicrous. It's absolutely ridiculous to be charging that amount of money for a year subscription for a service like this. My suggestion for this, however, is to go elsewhere. And there are sites out there 
which provide full overlay packages, full themed packages, and it's a one-time purchase. You buy it, you own it, and that's it. Brilliant. Sites like Own3D and Nerd or Die, personally I've used both before, and they are fantastic services. They provide all of the documentation for you, they provide all of the files for you, and it's yours to keep and you have that license lifetime. And it's like £15. If you get some spare cash, £15 gets you a full overlay like that, and it's brilliant. Another suggestion would be supporting artists that you know. Now, within the Twitch sphere um, online, there are a lot of artists you can be found on Twitter, and some of them are absolutely phenomenal. And some of my favourite ones, which I'll throw up on screen just now, they do incredible work, and you can commission them to do any form of artwork you want, just about. There are thousands, and I mean thousands, of artists on Twitter that are always open for commissions, to be doing panels, to be doing themes, BRB screens, anything you want to your own custom design, and I highly, highly implore you to check out Twitter and look at some Twitter artists. My final point about this subscription service that they have is possibly the worst one. People have reported to be taking out limited time offers, such as like a $3.99 or a free month trial, and cancelling that and then being charged a full year subscription at $150 or whatever the equivalent is, which is horrific. That shouldn't be happening. And when said persons have contacted the support team, the support team has replied saying that they don't have any email addresses relating to that account or any accounts relating to that email address. You know what I mean? Which is not very good. To sum up, however, I don't feel that Streamlabs are doing anything maliciously. I think they are trying to provide a good service. I think at times they do provide a really good service for people. The only issue I have is the fact that they're catering to new people while charging a subscription for things that you can get much cheaper or even make yourself. Streamlabs OBS as a program, it, it works. Plenty of people use it, plenty of people enjoy using it and I think if I hadn't been so used to using OBS Studio, then I could have adjusted to using Streamlabs OBS and I wouldn't have known anything different, but my recommendation is just to use OBS Studio. It takes you 20 minutes to learn how to use it. You get access to plugins, you get access to the updates quicker, and overall it's less stress on your computer while you're playing games while you're live streaming, and that's where my recommendation is. So thanks very much for watching, I will catch you guys in the next one. See ya.